image of, of Iran. I mean, I've, I've spent a fair bit of time in, both in Israel and Northern Ireland, and, and the perceptions of those countries in the rest of the world are, are they're bizarre. They just don't reflect the reality. But we, we see an Iranian leader who seems to be in almost insane uh, policies that are very difficult to understand. Is that anything like the reality of living in contemporary Iran? Well, I can't really say that because I don't live in sure. contemporary Iran. But um, Ahmadinejad's insanity or alleged insanity is not, I don't think, surprising. I just, I, I'm, I'm sort of bewildered that people are so surprised by um, this gentleman. Um, the things he says are not new. They're not coming out of nowhere. You know, this is not a massive change. I mean, it's quite nuanced in terms of from when you go from Khatami to Ahmadinejad, yes. But in terms of the ideological underpinnings of the Islamic Republic, Ahmadinejad is quite, I think, emblematic of the regime. Really? Do we know what sort of support he would have in the, in the population at large? I know that's very difficult to, to Well, he imagine. was selling himself as a sort of Che Guevara character, mm -hmm. right? That, you know, um, uh, in terms of fixing the economic crisis in Iran, the huge disparity between the rich and the poor, mm. which was one of the selling points of the revolution um, sure. initially, uh, which has just widened. It hasn't done anything in terms of bringing um, people more economic stability. Mm. So I don't know what sort of support he might have, but I know that in terms of Tehran, for instance, there's different pockets. You might He might have more support in the south, but if you go to northern Tehran, He's not going to find much support there. So, I, growing up in universities and so on with, with many Iranians, and again, this is very much a, a Western view, and a, it might even be a, an offensive one in a way, but sophisticated people, uh, illiterate people, sometimes even cynical, um, a man who says the Holocaust didn't happen, e even some fairly callow governments in places like Syria don't give that sort of line out. But the, now this is coming from Tehran. This is very shocking to a lot of people. Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't really shocked. Really? I mean, I, I, this government fails to shock me, so I, I wasn't shocked by his comments. I was embarrassed, mm -hmm. disturbed, um, but I wasn't shocked. And I don't know how much education, you know, Mr. Ahmadinejad has. Um, I know that, for instance, in the education system in Iran, genocide is not taught, you know, gen there is no such thing as genocide studies, or the Holocaust is not taught, so, you know, it's not something that even the population is quite exposed to. You have to actually do some work to, you know, learn about Birkenau or Auschwitz, or you have to do that work yourself. It's not something that's instilled or part of the education system. Um, his comments, they're embarrassing. I mean, I was utterly embarrassed and felt like I should be apologizing not only to you know, Jewish people, but e Iranian Jews inside the country who, you know, I don't know how they feel when they hear something like this, but Iran tends to, not Iran, but this specific government tends to blur the, you know, the lines between anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism, so. Yeah. A lot more to hear when we come back in a few moments on the Michael Curran Show. We'll, uh, we'll see you very soon. Don't go away.